from history. Welcome to a new episode of Weirdos from History, where we wag our tongues about the wackiest, weirdest, and borderline wicked characters that time has to offer. Today's superstar is a peculiar Puritan, a gentleman gone rogue, the one and only Matthew Hopkins. Born in Britain around 1620, dear old Matt grew up in Great Wenham, Suffolk, a place simmering with superstition and slanderous stories about witches, setting the scene perfectly for our budding witch finder. Our friend, Matthew, didn't just pop out the womb with a witch-hunting whim. Oh no, it was a family affair. His dear papa, Pastor James Hopkins, was a virtuous vicar who had a vendetta on vice and viewed witchcraft as a vicious violation. Now, if that doesn't set a stage for a lifetime career. When dear old dad departed to the great beyond in 1634, Matt made a move that was no ordinary migration. He hightailed it to Manning Tree, Essex, where he waved his inheritance around like a peacock in a poultry farm, announcing, Behold, the gentleman cometh. Manning Tree, brace yourselves. Flash forward to 1644. The English Civil War was causing chaos and calamity, and our man of the hour smelled opportunity. He hitched his witch-finding wagon to the hysteria after his associate, the sly yet sincere Stern, stirred some suspicion against a slew of women in Manning Tree. So began our man, Matthew's manhunt. Hopkins' witch hunt wasn't a haphazard hobby. He had a method to his madness. He would inspect every inch of these innocent individuals, hunting high and low for hellish hallmarks or devilish deformities. Any acne, mole or rash could lead to a ruckus and have these women deemed witches. Now imagine, it's 1645. You're a dame living in the drowsy town of Chelmsford when the witch-finder general comes knocking. Twenty-three women were rounded up like cattle and carted off to the courtroom. Nineteen were hanged high for all to see, while four fell victim to the harsh prison conditions. Matthew produced a witch-hunting spectacle that would put Broadway to shame. With the resumes laden with witch exterminations, our dynamic duo, Hopkins and Stern, embarked on an epic adventure across East Anglia and neighboring counties. Calling themselves the dubious witch finder generals, they took their freak show on the road, saying they were sanctioned by Parliament. Some fell for the fib, others just fell to their witch hunting antics. What's a witch trial without a confessional circus, you ask? Hopkins and his horrific henchman Stern use methods more sinister than a snake in the shadows. From prickly pricking, exhausting sleep deprivation, to wicked water submersion, they drew delirious declarations from their victims, all in a day's work for our tormenting twosome. Bless their diabolical hearts, Hopkins and his gang didn't just do it for the giggles, they charged a pretty penny for their performances. They milked towns for money, making a mint from the mass hysteria they meticulously manufactured. Talk about making a killing! Between 1644 and 1646, our hellish Hopkins was part of the demise of approximately 300 supposed witches. It's quite the claim to fame, making him the proud owner of the title, the prolific Puritan Punisher. However, the sun was beginning to set on Hopkins' reign of terror. In 1647, our infamous inquisitors found themselves under some fiery scrutiny from the justices of the Assizes. Questions were asked. Answers were avoided. It was an interrogation for the ages. While navigating the murky waters of judicial judgment, Hopkins managed to pen down his paranoia in his publication, The Discovery of Witches. His infamous guidebook to the ghastly entered into international infamy, even swaying the verdict against poor Margaret Jones over in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Talk about influence! Alas, Matt's malevolent merrymaking came to a close on August the 12th, 1647. He swapped his witch-finding shenanigans for an eternal slumber at his home in Manningtree. The cause of his demise Boring old tuberculosis. Not quite the spectacular end one might have expected for such a showman. Matthew found his final rest in the graveyard of the Church of St. Mary at Misley Heath. His gravestone, 
a morbid reminder of a man who once terrorized towns and villages hunting poor souls in a time where fear and superstition ran rampant. As we say our goodbyes to the man, the myth, and the monstrous legend that was Matthew Hopkins, let us remember him as the epitome of misguided religious fervor and a living testament to the perils of unbridled superstition. His tactics were even employed in the notorious 1692-93 Salem Witch Trials, proving that his legacy of lunacy lingered long after his departure. Well, folks, that's all from this episode of the peculiar, the perplexing, and the downright bizarre beings from the annals of history. If you found the murky and malevolent exploits of Matthew Hopkins as morbidly entertaining as we did, do give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you have a penchant for peculiar personalities. Feel free to accuse your neighbours of witchcraft in the comments section. And remember, folks, keep it weird. <laughs>